Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to film a blue look with a slightly pink hue to it. I'm not entirely sure how it's going to come out. So a little update on my skin. My forehead is starting to go back to normal. It is feeling a lot smoother. It's still not entirely smooth, but it's getting better. So fingers crossed it stays on the mend so then I can get rid of the pigmentation and have the smooth skin on my forehead like I used to have and it will be perfect. So on my skin, I've got the Aborian Matte Cream. This gives a really nice mattifying blurring effect. It just stops your skin from looking so shiny. Today I'm gonna to use some new products. This is the Makeup Drop Sponge. It's a hybrid sponge, so it's got a silicone pad on it and the rest is obviously sponge and it's dampened, so it is quite big at the moment. But what I love about it is that you pop your foundation onto the silicone pad which you can then disperse around the face and it doesn't absorb into the sponge then all you've got to do is just bounce the foundation onto the skin with the actual sponge side so I quite like that the foundation I'm going to use is the Transform Matte Foundation by Natasha Denona it comes with such an array of undertones and different shades so there's something for everybody this one is 25 light which is neutral yellow I need to pick from the colours that I've got. Ideally I wouldn't opt for yellow while I'm so pale in the winter. Yellow tends to suit me better in the summer when I've got colour. We'll work with it. So I'm going to pop a small amount of this onto my sponge. This is a bit darker than my skin tone. It's quite yellow compared to what I am. So I'm going to dispense it with the sponge with the silicone pad over all the areas that I want it. So this is great because it means now that hasn't absorbed into the sponge yet. It's all on my face as opposed to stuck inside and not being able to access it. I'm gonna use the other side to bounce it onto my skin. Where this is a matte foundation, I do find it tends to set quite quickly in place and you need more of a swiping motion rather than a bouncing motion. It's not too thick, it's more of a runny consistency, more so than I expected it to be. I thought being a matte foundation that it would be slightly thicker because they do tend to be but this one's very liquid, which I quite like. The sponge is really good, but I think it'll work better with a different foundation. So I'm just gonna use a brush for this. So I've just looked and there are 35 shades available. There's neutral, yellow, red, and warm undertones. I'm just reading it off of the information. So these are all the colors. And as you can see, they go really fair to really dark. So it says it's a medium to full coverage. It's definitely that. It says it's got skin loving botanical extracts that work to optimize hydration and chase away shine for a photo flawless skin. It doesn't feel too drying, which is quite nice. Be interesting to see how it wears. So when I look up close, I've got a little bit of a dry patch here on my nose. This area has become quite obvious where it's dry, so definitely avoid if you've got dry skin. It's covered my blemish as well, and it looks nice, especially under this lighting. It'll definitely look heavier in daylight, but overall, if you're looking for a mattifying medium to full coverage, this is a lovely looking foundation so far. Really like it, and I love the shade range it's got. So I've done my eyebrows. I'm now gonna move on to the eyes before I do the rest of the skin. So we'll do a voiceover for this bit. I've popped on some Soft Ochre Paint Pot by MAC to neutralize my eyelid. And underneath my eyes, I'm popping on some shadow shields because we're gonna be working with some pigments and I don't want them to fall down onto my face. If you don't have shadow shields, do your eye makeup first. The first color I'm gonna be using is this bronzer by Too Faced. And on a fluffy blending brush, I'm working this through the socket area. This is the base color that's gonna be on our eyes to work as a transition shade so that the blue doesn't look like it doesn't blend into anything. We're gonna have a nice warm brown smoke to it. And this bronze is perfect because it's a matte finish. Now I'm taking this mahogany brown shade called Hammered from the Blueprint Stack by Melt Cosmetics. And I'm using this to smoke out the socket line, pulling it out on the outer edge so it does wing out slightly. And this is going to fade into the transition shade that we've already laid down. As you can see, this is also a matte finish and it's super easy to blend. Melt Cosmetics do amazing eyeshadows. So I lay the eyeshadow down with one brush and then I use a clean fluffy blending brush to buff the colour into the skin so it blends out. Then I repeat the process so we're building up the intensity of that eyeshadow. Layering eyeshadow means it's going to last a lot longer. Applying thin washes means you can blend it out easier than applying too much to begin with and struggling to blend it out. So it's just a case of repeating the same process over and over until you're happy with the blend and happy with how intense the colour is. The first colour I'm using is called King Stud, which is a metallic sapphire blue. And I'm using a flat shader brush to press this onto the mobile lid 
and I'm concentrating the colour on the outer half and the inner half, leaving the centre with no colour. Don't worry yourself too much if the colour migrates in the centre, we're going to be using a white cream pencil in that area to get rid of any eyeshadow that does meet in the centre, but if you can help it, try and leave it with no colour. These eyeshadows swatch incredible with your finger, they're so creamy and so soft. They need a couple of layers when you use a brush, but they are still so intense. On a mini detailer brush, I'm going back in with Hammered and I'm pressing that against the seam of where the blue eyeshadow meets the crease. And I'm using small tapping motions to lay the colour down and then very light handed swipes to start to blend the colour up and out. I don't want this to be too smoky in the crease area so I'm not taking it too high that's why we want to use a very light hand and then you can also go back in with your brush dipped into the bronzer which is a lighter brown and work that over the darker brown and that will start to lighten the colour so it doesn't become too muddy and it doesn't come up too high. We will get a little bit darker in the crease later on but for now we want to keep it relatively light. I'm also taking that hammered colour underneath the lower lashes and using a tapping motion I'm creating more of an intense V shape on the outer third of the top lid. Tap off all the excess product that is on your brush and then use a tapping motion to press the colour in the shape that you want it. Wipe the excess off the bristles and then you can start to blend it. Again using a very light hand means it's very easy to blend. Next we're going in with our first pigment, this one is called Sapphire by Peaches and Cream. And to begin with I'm going to mix it with a little bit of my Inglot Duraline. I like to make a bit of a paste to begin with and use this as a base to lay down before I apply the pigment alone on top. If you've seen my Cleopatra Egyptian Goddess Makeup tutorial, which I will link on screen for you, then you've seen me use this method before. You get the most opaque finish and colour payoff by mixing it first and then applying the pigment directly on top, which I'm doing now. I'm pressing it on with the same brush just dipped into the pigment. I like to have the eyeshadow down as a base and sandwich in the colours so that they really last. The next pigment I'm using is called Double Denim, also by Peaches and Cream. And I'm pressing this over Sapphire towards the centre of the lid so we create a transition between the two shades. Then I'm taking NYX Jumbo Pencil in the shade Milk, which is white, and I'm drawing a line through the centre of the two colours. Then taking a small brush, I'm feathering the seam between the pigment and the white eye pencil. Don't worry if it starts to look a bit messy, we're going to be going back in with the colours again to redefine and intensify them. Next I'm going in with this pinky gold shimmer called She's All That also by Peaches and Cream and I'm using my little finger to press that directly over the white pencil and then feathering it over the edges slightly so that we get a bit of a gradient going on. You can see now why we need the shadow shields down because we have a lot of loose pigment that tends to really just fall onto the face. I absolutely love these colours together, they're incredible. Using my brush I'm pressing a very small amount of double denim in between sapphire and shizzle there and I'm using a really light hand to do this. Going back to my Milk Cosmetics Blueprint stack, I'm taking the shade Dim Out and I'm using that on a small detailer brush to press that between the seam of the blue eyeshadow and the brown smoke that we've got going on. Mixing brown and blue can often create a bit of a muddy appearance, so we do want this to be very, very light and we don't want to blend it out too far, so that's why we want to use a very small brush to do this. This allows us to be really precise with where we blend it, how far it goes and how much we apply. I'm using a very, very light hand to feather that up into that brown shade and then I'm going back in with my brush that has the brown on to redefine the brown. Along my waterline, I'm applying this Montauk eyeliner by Milk Cosmetics. And along the top lash line, I'm applying this new roller liner by Benefit Cosmetics in a black shade. And I'm going to line the entire top lash line and create a little wing on the outer edge. I'm using their mini version, which is great for traveling. They have a full size version. They also do this in a really nice brown shade, which I use for every day. And as you can see, it's got a really nice pointy tip. So that's great at creating a wing with a really sharp defined crisp line. Adding the black helps to break up the blue a little bit. You can see the blue here really makes the brown in my eyes vibrant. Blue is a great way to make brown eyes pop. Here I'm applying a mascara primer by YSL and then I'm going to go in with this Climax Mascara by NARS Cosmetics and this is also black. Off camera I'm going to apply some false eyelashes by Eldora Lashes and these are in the style M104. So I'm going to warm the skin up. I'm going to use my Chanel 
Cream bronzer, as you know, it is a firm favourite of mine. And I'm using that on my It Cosmetics Heavenly Luxe number no. 7 brush, and I'm going to use that to stipple over the top of the foundation. I'll whisk through this bit because you've seen me do this loads of times recently. I'm going to use a powder puff and some of the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Finish Powder. So I'm going to press that onto the centre of the base. This is the best powder for mattifying, it's absolutely phenomenal. You can instantly see that it just takes away the shine. This is the Armani Power Fabric High Coverage Stretchable Concealer. I've used this a couple of times already and I really like it. The colour I am using is 5. This concealer blends really well, it doesn't sit in any creases under the eyes and it lasts all day. really like it. So I'm using the brush to pull the concealer down first because we're going to work it up towards that pigment but we don't want it to mix with the concealer just yet because if it's on the brush we're going to pull it down onto the face which is going to look like a mess. Work it over the areas that you just need a little bit more of a softer finish to. I also find with this concealer it doesn't need setting, it just kind of stays in place and it doesn't set in the fine lines. Next I'm going to use some Hoola by Benefit, this one has got my name on it, this is a really sweet touch. We're just going to use this to add a little bit more of a sculpt to the face, but we still want it to be quite bronzy rather than too cool. The brush I'm using is one of my favourites, it's an angled brush so it just kind of sits where you want it to and you can just go backwards and forwards and it goes on that angle of your cheekbone. This one is the Zoeva 127 Luxe Sheer Cheek Brush. For blush, I'm going to use this Gen Nude blush by Bare Minerals in the shade Pink Me Up. This is a matte finish and I'm just going to put it onto the back of the cheek. This would look lovely with a glow to it, you could add a highlight. I'm not going to just because, as you know, I don't really like wearing highlight with my skin texture, but with that kind of glow you've got on the eyes, it would look lovely with a pop of highlighter on the cheeks. I really like the Charlotte Tilbury Chic to Cheek blushes because they come with a highlighter as well and they just look beautiful on skin that's kind of really immaculate. I'm going to take a small amount of that around the top here. A lipstick, I'm going to try something from the Becca Ultimate Lipstick Love Collection. I have actually popped up some swatches on my Instagram and they're now on the Sephora website which is quite cool. So if you want to see the swatches of all these lipsticks go on Sephora's website. I was going to go with something pinky but... <laughs> You know me. I'm going to use Bare, which is a warm sort of nude shade. These are really hydrating and so pigmented. We could just do such nice products. So along with the lipsticks, they've also done lip liners. And on here, they've got all the lipsticks that they've got in the collection. And then the corresponding liner that goes with it. So I've just put my hair in a high pony. That's a job. Hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Let me know if you would wear this look, if you like it. I really like it. It's particularly good if you've got brown eyes because the blue really makes them that much more intense and it makes the colour look a little bit more vibrant and a bit more lively. As usual, thank you so much for watching. If you've got any comments or questions, leave them in the comment section below. All the products I've used will be listed and linked in the description bar. If you've got any requests, leave them in the comment section as well and I will see you next week. Bye!